On today's show, our driving impressions of the new Toyota Prius, the Lincoln MKZ gets a new face, and Audi's self-driving race car sets record times out on the track. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for November 18th of 2015. Sales of Lincoln's midsize sedan, the MKZ, have been falling this year. They're down over 13% so far. But the brand is looking to turn that around with the newly redesigned car. The most noticeable change is the MKZ gets Lincoln's new signature grille, which was first shown on the Continental Concept. Along with the new lighting package, I think the car appears more luxurious than before and even looks a little like the Jaguar XE. An all-new Lincoln-exclusive 3.0-liter twin-turbocharged V6 engine is available that puts out 350 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque with front-wheel drive, and when paired with all-wheel drive, produces 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. A hybrid alternative and 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine are available as well. Moving to the inside, the interior layout is much the same, but Lincoln did change out the slider adjustments for the vents and audio controls to switches and dials. The new Lincoln MKZ goes on sale next summer. We got our first look at what the new Honda Civic would look like back in April with a neon colored coupe concept, and now we're getting our first look at the production car. And as you can see, it kept a fair amount of the more emotional styling, something we're not used to from Honda. Pair that with a car that's said to improve handling, steering, ride quality, and cabin quietness, it is good news for one of the best-selling vehicles in America. The Civic lineup will also be expanding in the U.S. with two firsts for the market, a five-door hatchback and a Type R model. Look for the Civic Coupe to launch in March. And in other Honda news, the long-awaited Honda Jep will wrap up testing with the FAA in a few days, which paves the way for certification and entry into service. And still to come, Audi shows off its autonomous technology at the racetrack. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Earlier this year, Audi took an autonomous RS7 to Sonoma Raceway in California and posted faster lap times than sports car drivers. And once again, its self-driving race car is tearing up the racetrack. This time, the car, powered by a 4-liter V8 by turbo engine, set record lap times at the Fast Park Motor Racetrack in Spain. The company says it's using what it learns out on the racetrack to develop self-driving systems for its production cars. But the company isn't only testing autonomous vehicles out on the racetrack. It just signed an agreement with the city of Somerville, near Boston, to bring automated parking to the area. The city is quickly growing, but there's limited space for more vehicles. With automated parking, garages can fit more vehicles because cars can be parked closer together, and pedestrian paths, elevators, or stairs are no longer required because the cars are parking themselves. The whole idea behind the project is to use urban spaces more efficiently, which in the end should save money because building parking structures is expensive. Toyota just introduced a significantly refreshed version of the RAV4. Most significantly, it now has a hybrid version of the compact crossover that uses the same hybrid system as the Lexus NX. It's only offered as an all-wheel drive model, and the powertrain consists of a 2.5-liter Atkinson cycle engine with Synergy Drive that powers the front wheels. The rear wheels are powered by an electric motor mounted to the rear axle that is electronically engaged when needed and is not connected to the engine by a drive shaft. Toyota claims the hybrid will deliver a combined 33 miles to the gallon. The starting price of a base hybrid version is $29,270, about $700 more than a comparably equipped non-hybrid version. Toyota is counting on the refreshed version to surpass the Honda CRV and Ford Escape and become the best-selling CUV in the segment. 
And speaking of Toyota, we'll give you our impressions of the new Prius right after this. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. John was at the media launch for the all-new Prius and filed his thoughts about the car. Here are the driving impressions he filed. The new Prius is noticeably different from the outgoing model from the way it looks, drives, and performs. But along with the pros, it has some cons. Let's start with the pros. The new Prius feels more substantial than before. It has a lot more sound deadening throughout the car, which makes it much quieter. For example, there is a sound deadening mat that covers the entire floor, not just sections of the floor as with the old model. Being quieter makes the car pleasant to drive at highway speeds. It also handles substantially better than the outgoing model, partly because it uses an independent rear suspension instead of a twist beam. Additionally, the steering is quicker and there is less nosedive breaking into turns. The average Prius driver may not pick up the, on that specifically, but they will notice it drives better. Acceleration is the same as before, but the fuel economy is improved. The Eco model delivers 56 miles per gallon combined, with other models delivering 52. But in many driving situations, you can beat that. John's best run was a 51 mile long drive where he averaged 59.9 MPGs, and that was not in the Eco model. Okay, now for the cons. The center touchscreen is positioned in a way that causes a blinding reflection from the sun in many situations. When it does, you have to drive with your arm outstretched and try and block the reflection with your hand. The sun visors are woefully short, leaving a big gap to the B pillar when moved to the side windows. And when accelerating briskly from a dead stop, there's a short shutter from the powertrain. It feels like a clutch is slipping until it finally grabs, or is that the CVT belt? The bottom line is that the Prius is a better car in almost every way. The cons are not deal killers, but merely annoying. And that means we should start to see Prius sales pick up as soon as the new model is in showrooms. That wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.